How's it going everybody? Welcome to We Do Tech. Now it's Friday, which means it's almost weekend again, but it also means it's time for another tech news video where I go over all of the tech news that happened in the previous week. So in these videos, I don't really go over everything in depth because otherwise it would take too long. So I just want to clarify that I'm going to go over most of the details, but if you want to read more, learn more about uh, the topics, you can follow the links in the video description where you can go read up a bit more yourself. So with all of that being said, uh, let's get into the video right after this. Do you live in South Africa and want to get yourself some awesome new gaming products? Well, go check out Rebel Tech. They have extremely low prices and they stock all the major brands like Asus, MSI, Gigabyte, Corsair and many more. So go check out rebeltech.co.za to go get the products you are looking for at a low price. Okay, so first up we have some crypto mining news and for gamers it could be good but for miners it could be bad. It depends on what you actually used. Now recently in the video I did bring out a new update for Windows 10 which like we all know they usually do but this new update actually uses more VRAM from your GPUs and a pr this is kind of a problem for some of the GTX 1063 gig models that are mining Ethereum. Now, currently the Ethereum DAG file isn't really at three gigs yet, but you have to reckon in that your system also uses some of that VRAM for other applications. So that just sets your VRAM consumption just over three gigs and that kind of uh, prevents you from using your NVIDIA GTX 1063 gig for Ethereum mining. Now that is only to do with the newest update that they brought out for Windows 10. So if you are still using an older up to, uh, older version of Windows, like personally I am as well on my mining system, then you are not inf affected by this yet. It's only if you are updating it to the latest version. So it's not really that bad per se, but if you are updated to the latest version, you won't be able to use your three gig model to mine Ethereum, but it's always really easy to just go back to a previous uh, version of Windows 10, or you can go use Linux or Windows 7, or there's a bunch of options out there for you guys. But now of course the DAC file will increase later on and they're predicting somewhere in 2019 where the DAC file will be bigger than three gigs and that will make all three gig models obsolete. So 2019, we're gonna see that these cards won't be able to mine Ethereum anymore. Although you don't really use your NVIDIA card to mine Ethereum. So it's not really that big of a problem. But 2019, yeah, it's gonna be fade out. But luckily the new NVIDIA cards are coming pretty soon. So we are looking forward to seeing those. And then for the next topic, AMD has recently just brought out their APUs, the 2200G and the 2400G, which is again the, the GPU and CPU on a single chip. But now there are some problems with these new chips. All of them are still AM4 sockets, so they can work on the previous generations of motherboards. But the problem again is you have to update that, uh, that motherboard to the latest BIOS update to actually work on the new CPUs. And the problem with this is if you buy a new motherboard, not all of them are up to date to the latest BIOS version. And then with that, you won't really be able to use the new CPU on the boards. Now, a lot of people have been experiencing this problem and AMD has come up with a solution, although I don't think it's gonna work for everybody, but they are bringing out a boot kit that you can order from their website for free. So all you have to go, do is go to their support page to request a boot kit. This boot kit is actually just an A6, a 9500 APU that the company will just ship to your uh, house for you to actually boot up your system and then update the BIOS to the latest version so you can use your new APU that you won't really be able to use as of yet. Now again, not all motherboards are affected by this problem. So more newer motherboards will be updated to the latest version, but some other ones, some uh, ones that was made before these new APUs, those ones won't really be able to use these APUs and you first need to update them with another AMD CPU, which is compatible with AM4. 
Okay, and then next up, AMD has confirmed that their new Ryzen 2000 series, which will be coming out somewhere in April, will have soldered on IHSs for better cooling. Now, the, their APUs that they brought out now just a while ago had thermal interface material, also known as TIM. This is where they would use just a thermal paste to put underneath the thermal heat spreader, and that doesn't really deliver that good of a cooling, whereas if you solder on the heat spreader, that's going to deliver a much better cooling solution for those CPUs. The reason they did this for the APUs is because it's cheaper than soldering on the CPU. Uh, soldering on the heat spreader on the CPU itself. So I can understand that for the APUs. Also something to mention that Intel has been doing this for almost all of the CPUs. So if they could potentially just bring out this soldered on IHS, it will deliver much better cooling for the CPUs, but we will have to wait and see if they actually do this. But again, we are, do have confirmed information that the new Ryzen 2000 series, the Ryzen 3 to Ryzen 7 range, will have soldered on IHSs for much better cooling. And then some more news from AMD. We have some information leaked for some two new APUs. So these APUs are a low power version of the 2400G and the 2200G, codenamed the 2400GE and the 2200GE. Now, the previous APUs that they brought out was 65 watt TDP CPUs, which is gonna work great for just normal desktops, but it's a bit hotter for some notebooks, especially for some thin uh, notebooks. So this is where they brought out these new ones, which is going to be 35 watt TDP CPUs, which is going to work very well for some thin, light uh, ultra books or just some notebooks. Now overall specs is that they're still the same CPUs, but just under a clock to use a less power for that 35 watt TDP. Now we don't have any news of their uh, CPU boost or their GPU boost as of yet, but we can predict that they are gonna be a bit lower than the original base. So we'll potentially see some of these in uh, some future notebooks, which is gonna work great because they are relatively powerful for all-in-ones, and it's probably just gonna be nice budget CPUs for uh, budget notebooks. So we'll have to wait and see for those. Okay, and then next up, Foxconn, which is one of Samsung's biggest manufacturers, are switching to produce some affordable 4K cameras. Now, if you can't say affordable 4K cameras, it's still gonna be very, very expensive, but it's not as expensive as the ones that are at the moment. And in fact, they're actually gonna partner up with a RED, which as you guys know, or some of you guys know, they make some a decent high quality cinematic 8K cameras. Some YouTubers that actually use these cameras are like Corridor Digital, MKBHD, and even Linus Tech Tips, which has two of them. So they are out there and you can buy them, but they are still quite expensive for the average consumer like you and I. So in a statement from Foxconn, they said, we will make cameras that will shoot professional quality film in 8K resolution, but at only third of the current prices and the third of the current camera size. Now again, like I mentioned, RED is producing some 8K cameras. Uh, one of these models is the 3.35 pound $30,000 Epic W camera. This is where Foxconn actually wants to uh, produce an 8K camera that will cost only around $10,000 and weigh just over a pound. So that's even less than uh, most DSLRs and that's gonna shoot 8K and also not at a to a high price if you look at the current market for 8K cameras. It's still very expensive for the normal person, but that will potentially help uh, grow out the market a bit more and potentially in a few years, us normal people will also have some 8K cameras, which is kind of crazy. So I'm looking forward to see what Foxconn can produce for these 8K cameras and potentially get one for ourselves in the future. Now, this doesn't mean that Foxconn is only gonna focus on these 8K cameras. They are still gonna do most of their work for Samsung, but they also just wanna uh, branch out a bit more and do some other projects. So this is cool to see that they're gonna do this as well. And then next up, Qualcomm has just produced the Snapdragon X24 LTE modem, which is the first seven nanometer modem that has speeds up to two gigabits 
megabits per second. Now, this is a more main for the future for the 5G network that will come out pretty soon for all modern smartphones. So we're potentially going to see uh, some high, high speeds for our modern smartphones when they come out. Only if our infrastructure supports them, which in South Africa, I'm not sure about yet. And then lastly, Blizzard is potentially bringing out some of their PC and console games to mobile. This is after the PUBG mobile game has been released. It's only on China, unfortunately, but that just shows us that mobile phone hardware has just increased that much that we are able to not fully port the, the PC or console games to our mobile phones, but it is there at the moment where we can just dumb down the games a bit to use it on our mobile smartphones and because of the huge uh, mobile phone market where there's ton of money in just mobile games Blizzard is seeing that there is still a lot of money to be made from that and this is where they want to port out some of their games for mobile for a lot more people to enjoy because not everybody does have a console or a PC so it's a very smart move from them but now what games will they potentially bring out for mobile is it going to be like wow or overwatch uh, i'm not really too sure but they can potentially bring out a smaller version of wow maybe but i think it's more going to be something like overwatch it is a shooter game so perhaps they can bring out overwatch for mobile and again just make a ton of money from that because a lot of people will play it so yeah that's pretty much it for this week in tech i do hope you guys enjoyed it if you did please like share comment comment like always also if you have any topics that you find throughout the week let me know in the comments down below or send it to me on twitter instagram facebook anything like that and i will take a look and perhaps add it in the ne next and <laughs> this week in tech video so again that's pretty much it thanks for watching guys and i will check all of you next time cheers guys